up guys, Steve Cook coming to you from my kitchen. It's been a long, long time since I made a video where we just talked about nutrition, which is kind of sad because it really is gonna be the most important thing when we talk about your fitness goals, whether it's performance, changing body composition, overall health, nutrition is going to be hands down the most important thing. Going to the gym is the fun part, doing things, eating right, that's going to be what really takes effort because guess what? It is easy to derail your nutrition and it's even hard sometimes to dig through the fads and what you should be eating, what you shouldn't eat. You know, it seems like things come out all the time talking about, oh, eat this or don't eat that. So today we're just gonna have some cut and dry facts and really what we're gonna break down is how to read nutrition labels. So I got done being the, the trainer on The Biggest Loser a couple months ago and probably the thing we talked about most on that show was nutrition and rightly so. One of the biggest things though is people just don't know how they should read food labels. They don't know what to look for. So today we're just gonna be breaking that down. So if you're new to nutrition or if it feels overwhelming, I have so many people that say, Steve, just tell me what to eat. Like I, I, I don't wanna know how to read food labels. I don't know how to put, I don't wanna know how to put together a diet together myself. I just wanna to be told what to eat and you can't do that. If this is gonna be long-term health, if this is gonna be a change that you make and stick with it, you have to educate yourself on what you're putting in your mouth. It's your body, it's, it's your job to do this. So start right now, even maybe take out a pen and paper and maybe jot some of the, these things down. And I don't wanna overwhelm you, so maybe focus on this week, we're not gonna weigh any food, just start reading labels. Maybe don't change your diet at all, just start focusing in on how to really make sense of the US nutrition label, or if you're someplace else, you're gonna to have to change up some of the, the measurements and things like that, but basically, they're all pretty similar. So, in 2021, all US food labels are gonna to have to look the same, and that's gonna include a added sugar. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but pretty much, food labels right now all have the calories, a serving size, and then they have fat, sodium on there, which we'll get into a little bit, carbohydrates, and protein. Fats, carbohydrates, and protein. Those are what we call macronutrients. The reason reading food labels is so important is because we're going to then be able to break it down and really see how many calories, how many protein, carbs, and fats we're eating in a serving size of whatever food we might want to consume. So looking at that label, first macronutrient you see is fat. Now, fat is very important, and a lot of times fat gets a bad rap. The reason fat's important is because it can be used as energy. It's not your body's preferred method, but it can be used as energy. Fat is also a, you know, your body can tap into your essential fatty acids if it needs to. And then also, fats are important because there are some vitamins that are fat soluble, meaning they have to be digested that, with the fat. So with fats, that's how your body gets and absorbs those vitamins is through the fat in your body. It's important to realize that jumping off, we need to look at calories per gram. And that's gonna be very important when calculating our total amount of calories. Now this video isn't going to tell you how many calories you should be eating. I'm not a clinical dietitian, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm gonna be going over just plain science here. What's, what's a protein, you know, what's carbs, what's fat? You know, when you start a diet or a, a new way of eating, you need to consult your, your dietitian. Um, so there's also a lot of FDA requirements and guidelines on here. So fat, fat, the reason fat gets kind of a bad rap because it's nine calories per gram. So when you look on the back of that food label and you see 14 grams of fat, you can automatically times that by nine. That will give you the total number of calories from fat in a serving of whatever you're looking at. And again, serving size is gonna be important because sometimes there's one serving size or there could be multiple. So you need to definitely look at that because some companies out there like to sneak it by and on the label or maybe on the packaging they write 340 calories when really that's for one serving and there might be three servings in the entire package. So you need to watch out for serving size. Fat is more calorically dense per gram than any other macronutrient. Now, 20 to 35% of your diet should be fat. When I was getting ready for bodybuilding shows, I would pretty much eat 20% of my total calories from fat. That was when I was trying to get lean. I have also eaten up to 30% fat, and I really have liked what it's done for my skin. You know, I, I feel healthy 
usually in between. So I like to go, for me personally, I like to factor in about 25% of my daily calories from fat. Um, looking at fats, now this is where things can kind of get confusing. So we want to be very clear about things. The types of fats are going to be very important because when we talk about fats, we have our unsaturated fats, mono and poly unsaturated fats. Then we have our saturated fats and then we have trans fats. Now right off the bat, I'm going to tell you right now, your body doesn't need any trans fats. So those are hydrogenated oils. Those are things that get added to the junk food that is undesirable for our body. They lead to tons of health issues. And if you can avoid those things, I suggest avoiding them. Now let's talk about saturated fats because sometimes they kind of get a bad rap as well. Saturated fats, your, your total calories, your, your total percentage, I guess, of your total calories that should come from saturated fats is 10% or less. So that's not a ton of calories. Saturated fats come from animal byproducts. So, you know, dairy, you know, your, your steaks, your chicken, your bacon, you know, all of these things that are animal byproducts are typically saturated fats. Um, some oils are also saturated fats, so just be mindful of saturated fats. Of course, your body does need some of those things. Your body does need saturated fats, just not a ton of. Next up, we have unsaturated fats. You have the monounsaturated and the polyunsaturated. Now, monounsaturated fats, plant-based. Think things like olive oil, canola oil, some nuts, or uh, peanut oil, um, avocados, and monounsaturated fats should really consist of the bulk of your daily fat intake. 15 to 20% of your total diet should be coming from monounsaturated fats. Polyunsaturated fats are gonna be crucial because that's where our omega-3s, that, those essential fatty acids, so you know your wild salmon and some of the nuts that we eat also contain that omega-3s omega in there. So th those are the, the polyunsaturated fats and that should really make up five to 10% of your total daily caloric intake. So you can see why fat is important, but it's also got a lot of kind of uh, subheadings underneath there. So we need to pay attention. If you're doing one thing with fats, I would say just try to be very mindful of trans fats, the way you are mindful of maybe sugar, which leads me to my next topic, which is carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates, it seems like we always vilify different macronutrients at different points in, it, in history. Sometimes fats are the enemy. And we saw all of these, these products, these, these foods that were reduced fat, low fat. And while sometimes that's a, a, a good thing, oftentimes those, those products, they were just replacing sugars instead of fat. So they're just replacing it with sugar, taking out the fat. So let's break down the nutrition label and look at sugars. Because really, sugars, right, right from the get-go, I'm gonna say, Added sugars into your diet should really account for less than 10%. And that typically, when you look at the average American diet, is where people are going wrong. You know, just the soft drinks, the juices we, we drink, we're gonna get more into that, but so many added sugars into our food to make them taste better. Typically, fats are added to food to make them more favorable for your tongue. Your tongue likes the way fats feel, your mouth when you're chewing. You know, we've all had fats, buttery things. You know, it, it, it feels good in our mouth. That's what she said. But sugars, they make things taste better. Carbs in their simplest forms are sugar. Now, we have simple sugars and we have complex carbohydrates, which are those starches. So starches are larger, you know, more desirable forms of carbohydrates. Think about a sweet potato. You think about, you know, a lot of whole grains. Those are gonna be complex carbs, and the reason we like those is they take longer to digest. They typically have other micronutrients in them, such as, you know, minerals, vitamins. So that's why complex carbohydrates or starches are also part of our diet that you need to be consuming. Now, when we look at the label, you see carbohydrates. You don't see starches anywhere. They don't need to, to tell you necessarily how many starches are in any given product, but they do need to label sugar and fiber. Now, in 2021, they will not only have total sugar, but they'll also have added sugar. And that added sugar is what you need to be careful of. That should really be that less than 10% of your diet. Not carbohydrates. Carbohydrates need to be 40 to 60%. I've seen even as much as, you know, 65% of your diet should be carbohydrates. If your body has carbohydrates, it's going to use carbohydrates as its preferred 
method of energy. Your brain really likes carbohydrates. To think, to function, we like carbohydrates for energy and for brain function. Moving on, so in on that food label, you have your sugars. Now added sugars, those are gonna be the things that we're very careful of, almost like those trans fats. Inevitably, you're gonna get some added sugar in things. What's the difference between added sugars, dextrose, glucose, the syrups, the honeys? You know, these are all very simple forms of sugar and they don't have any of these other micronutrients in them. They're pretty much just sugar. Whereas some of these other sugars, so what sugar is okay? Lactose, fructose. Those two types of sugar, while they still need to be kept in check, they provide other nutrients. They also have fiber in them and protein in them, which is gonna slow down the digestion of those carbohydrates. Now, why are we talking about digestion rates? Because that's gonna really be important when we talk about spiking insulin in our body. So that's something we don't wanna do over and over and over and over again. That's how you become a diabetic. Basically, looking at lactose, that's what's found in some of the dairy. You know, so lactose is a sugar found in dairy. And then fructose, obviously found in fruit. So we need to have some servings of them. The FDA does recommend some servings of each of those things, but they should still be kept in check. Moving on from carbohydrates, we're gonna be talking about protein. Now, it seems like protein sometimes has this this idea that I can eat as much protein as I want and it's like free, my body's not going to store it as fat, which is completely untrue. If you have an excess of protein, obviously it's calories. In fact, just like carbohydrates, protein is four calories per gram. When we look at the FDA, 15, even 10% I've seen to 30% of our diet, even 25% I've seen comes from protein. Now, this is for an individual to me that maybe is a little bit more sedentary, that isn't tearing down muscle into the gym. I've eaten up to 40% of my diet from protein when I've gotten ready for a show, and I didn't really have any adverse effects from that, but you know, probably on a normal day-to-day, -day, I eat 30 to 35% of my diet from, from protein. Now, when we talk about protein, really there's two things. We have complete proteins and we have incomplete proteins. Complete proteins are gonna come from animal sources. When you eat that chicken, when you eat that beef, you know, all of those things contain complete protein sources. Um, you know, even milk and, and other dairy products are gonna have complete protein sources. Eggs, another one. When we talk about incomplete proteins, we're generally talking about proteins coming from plant-based sources. Now, they're not bad. I don't wanna upset any of our vegan or vegetarian friends out there. You can still get complete proteins eating a vegan or a vegetarian diet. You just need to combine incomplete proteins to then make a complete protein. And that's where really educating yourself if you're vegan or vegetarian, or even if someone who just wants to maybe try more plant-based protein options, you need to make sure that whatever you're getting is really combining and making a complete protein. Protein is the building blocks of any tissue. So pretty much every cell in your body is gonna have protein in it. So you can see why we need protein. It's important for just overall health. And protein is one of those things that it, your body doesn't store it, meaning you can't store protein and then use it later. So that's why we need to be supplying our body with protein every couple of hours, you know, every four to six hours having some protein. I, I don't think I need to say that if you miss that or if you're intermittent fasting that you're gonna be absolutely fine, but those amino acids, the building blocks of protein, are what our body uses and builds tissue in our body. So I can see why this is a lot of information and hopefully this kind of breaks it down and makes it a little bit easier for you to understand. No matter what, you guys need to make sure that you can read food labels because when we start talking about portion control, when we start talking about good foods versus bad foods, what do we even mean by that? And so right now, I'm gonna just gonna show you guys how important food labels can be. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get out on the counter some protein, some carbs, some fats. A lot of these foods will contain more than just one type of macronutrients. We're gonna get 200 calories of different types of food, and you guys are gonna be able to see for yourself just what that looks like, ranging from foods I almost never eat, those junk foods, foods I eat seldomly, like almonds and almond butter, foods I eat more of, like protein, and then foods I eat, I try to eat even more of, which are you know the, the vegetables, some of the starches, and then also some fruits in there. So we're just gonna take a look at what 200 calories looks like from different energy sources. And you guys, I think, will be pretty shocked when we see what 200 calories looks like when we start talking about these different foods. Nine servings 
in this. One serving is about 21 pieces or 28 grams. Grams is always the most accurate way to figure out, you know, how many calories you're getting and things because if you have a food scale, I could pinpoint 28 grams to a T. Now you guys need to make sure you know the difference between grams when we talk about weighing and then when we talked about number of calories per gram. So the grams of fat on there are not the same in terms of the weight measurement of grams. Those are two different things. So, so you can see, really, I like to think of macronutrients like a bank. Like each day, you start the bank with a certain amount of money. Boom. 200 calories of flaming Hot Cheetos right there. Doesn't go a whole long way. Breakfast cereals are usually some of the worst when it comes to being loaded with sugar. We're gonna round this up. We'll say it's 200. It's 180, 180 calories for one container. Total fat, two grams, not bad on fat. Total carbohydrates, 40 grams. And then we have 16 grams of sugar. So out of that 40 grams of carbohydrates, 16 grams or sugar. That's added sugar when I say that. That is 31% of the total amount of sugar, added sugar you can get in a day that they recommend. So just, just be wary. Things like this add up fast. So you're gonna see in here, the, all those sugary marshmallows, that's really gonna be all of your added sugar. Of course, there's gonna be a little bit in the whole grain pieces of cereal in there. Next up, our Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. This has exactly 200 calories. So between these two things right here, you're already pretty much, you know, 60% of your daily added sugar amount. Just between those two things right there. It's not a whole lot, so. All right, next up, a fan favorite, Twinkies. Oh, just smelling these brings back memories of old, like Little League games. You know, that, that one mom that didn't know a thing about health or nutrition. Oh well, yeah, let me bring Twinkies to a bunch of kids that need more nutrients than, than anyone else on the planet. Kids need more nutrients. Kids need good foods. If anyone should be eating healthy, it's kids. Don't think out there that I'm a parent, I should make something different for my kids that tastes better than something for me. No, if you're a parent out there, right off the bat, you feed your kids, you know, once they're out of that baby toddler stage, you have them eat dinner like, like you would want to eat dinner. You know, a good balanced meal. So looking at these, serving size, two cakes, total calories, 280. Right there, that's your 200 calories of Twinkies. I don't know what the heck I'm gonna do with all this junk food afterwards. And again, someone might look at this and think, oh, it's made with cheese. It's reduced fat, 40% less fat than regular cheese. Oh, that's great. Look at what 200 calories gets you. Less than the Cheetos, basically. So just because something says reduce fat, it's kind of a way of sucking you in. It doesn't mean necessarily it's better for you, that is for sure. So next up, I wanna talk about foods that we think are healthy, that are probably on almost every healthy person's grocery shopping list, and for good reasons. A lot of these foods contain great healthy fats, good sugars coming from just oranges. You know, this doesn't contain any added sugars like we were talking about. This is containing fructose coming from just squeezed oranges in there. So these are actually good foods, but we need to look at how calorically dense they are. Again, this represents 200 calories. Right there you have about, mm, you know, maybe 40 almonds, 36 to 40 almonds. Here we have two thirds of a protein bar. Here we have about 34 grams of almond butter, a little bit more, and then 15 ounces of orange juice, all 200 calories. Now, when we start talking about daily calories that you should be consuming from the FDA, the average person's anywhere from about 21 to 2300. If you're eating five times a day, including beverages and everything else, three meals, two snacks, that's five times a day, 400 calories is what you should be getting in each one of those. Now, I'm closer to about 3,100 calories just for maintenance, so I eat about 600 calories five times a day. Every morning, I wake up with $3,100 in my bank account, and I have to pick and choose what I buy it on. If I, if I spend too much on clothes, 
I wouldn't have anything left over to pay my bills. And really what that does is it puts you in a mindset of you want the most bang for your buck. You can clearly see here, junk food does not pass the test. Healthy foods that are calorically dense, while good for you, need to be kept in moderation. Then you have things like vegetables and fruits, starches and the proteins. We're gonna go into that and you're gonna see how much more volume that those things have. Four, this entire bag, literally this entire bag, we're going to have 105 calories. 105 calories. Basically what we're able to do is that plus two thirds of this bag, 200 calories. That compared to anything else there on the table. Now I'm not just saying you need to eat that, but when we're putting together a meal that contains four to 600 calories, depending on where you're at, something like this is gonna go a lot further in keeping you full because it has fiber. Fiber is almost like a free form of a carbohydrate because it's insoluble, meaning your body can't break it down. You ingest it, it's digested slowly, it's never fully absorbed, and then you poop it out basically. So your body doesn't really do anything with fiber other than slow down the digestion rate. Um, it's good for you. There are obviously a lot of other nutrients in here. So you need to get, you know, you, I like to shoot for 30, to 40 grams of fiber every single day. Next up, protein source, salmon. This is gonna have protein and also those omega-3 fatty acids. So we need around, right around five ounces of salmon for 200 calories. And right there, we're five and a half ounces. So you can see a nice piece of salmon there. Again, you might eat as many calories snacking as you would in this, but this with some vegetables and you know some rice is gonna keep you a lot more full than eating something like this Pop-Tart here. You pick, you pick. And I know which one is gonna taste better. I know that, but if you do this right, a little garlic, cook it up nicely, pair it with some vegetables, you're gonna thank yourself, you're gonna be full, you're not gonna feel like crap. It means you're gonna wanna go to the gym, you're gonna wanna train. So it's this, this vicious cycle. If you eat bad, you feel like crap, you don't go to the gym, all of a sudden you start eating healthy, you start going to the gym, you feel better, endorphins get released, and all of a sudden, like, you're where you're at, so. No, I am a guy, and I'm a lazy chef. I don't always cook my rice how I should. I get some of the microwavable rice, but my goal here is to show you, I need half of this rice. Right there is perfect, so half of this rice, 200 calories. Now, boom. This basically, 600 calories right there. 200 of each. There's no way I'm eating that many vegetables. So I might even take out half of those. Even if I take out half, that's gonna be a ton of vegetables. Cook it up in a pan, maybe add some condiments like a Bragg's liquid amino oil, which is gonna taste like some soy sauce. Maybe mix it up with some garlic. It's gonna make it taste good. And I'm gonna have 500 calories because I take away 100 of those vegetables. 500 calories, I'm gonna have a good source of protein and fat in here, a carbohydrate source in there, and then just that, that fibrous, also carbohydrates, but really, I almost consider these like free calories, basically. This, two, four, six, 800 calories. That might be what you snack on in a day and don't even realize. 800 calories, now we're talking about at least a third of your day, just right there. Again, you're thinking it's healthy. I don't know why I'm not losing weight. I'm eating my meals and I'm snacking healthy but you could just be overdoing it with the total amount of calories that you're snacking on. Again, not bad food, just you need to be wary of how calorically dense these are. And then we have two, four, six, eight, 1,000, 1,200 calories. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I eat junk food, what do I want? More junk food. So then you reach for the Cheetos. You stop at the grocery store and you get a Twinkie. Now your day's completely ruined. So you go home and you open up that box of cereal and then maybe later on you snack on those Cheez-Its. Now I'm not saying never ever ever have any of that. You know, if you really love, like if Pop-Tarts are your jam and you need a Pop-Tart every now and then, don't limit yourself. But I'm just saying to you guys right now, 
If you love yourself, if you love your body, don't you wanna give it good things? You're gonna to wanna to read food labels. You're gonna to wanna to figure out how to weigh things out on a scale. There's no shortcut. You can ask somebody for a diet, but until you figure it out for yourself, until you're able to eyeball, you know, doing this, I did this for years. You do it for three months, use that food scale. Then you'll be able to eyeball things and say, no, no. I know that there's a difference between this, this, and this, you know, I know there's a difference. I can have this in limited quantities. I know this stuff is just gonna lead me down a path that I'm not gonna be happy with. So guys, I hope this kind of opens your eyes and makes you realize that, hey, maybe I should start reading food labels or, or maybe I need to reevaluate some of the healthy foods that I think I'm eating that might be sabotaging my diet. As always, single ingredient type foods to me are the win. Shop around the outside of the grocery store. That's where you find your fresh meats, your vegetables, your produce, your fruits, things like that. This stuff is all gonna be on the shelves, never refrigerated because they have so many preservatives in them that they're gonna be loaded up and able to stay on that shelf for a hundred years. So, in conclusion, hopefully this has helped you guys out. If you guys like these, we can do more of them, but this is what 200 calories looks like with different foods here. Read those food labels, guys. As always, make sure you drink tons of water as well. And then if you're out there and you're not exercising at all, just go for a walk. Move for 20 or 30 minutes. You don't need to go to the gym for hours, but start by making healthy decisions and move a little bit more. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Steve Cook. We'll see you next time.